Welcome to jessieathome.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the Joseph Puff Stitch bl Baby Blanket. So named because I have designed this blanket for a little baby boy named Joseph. And it has puff stitches in it. So there you have the reason for the name. Now, if you're watching this post through jessieathome.com, then you'll see the whole blog post that goes along with this, with the pattern and everything. If not, if you happen to come across this video on YouTube or elsewhere, you can look underneath the video in the description box, and there is a link that will take you to the post that has um, this pattern at jessieathome.com, and you will find the pattern written out along with some still photos. You will find a chart that goes along with this and some other helpful information. So it's definitely good to click that link. I'll give you all the final numbers and everything. Because in this video, I'm just going to show you how to make a little square of this blanket just so that you have the idea of how this works. Now, I want to let you know that I am using Vanna's Choice Lion Brand Yarn. That's what I used for this blanket. And in that post at jessieathome.com, there is um, the, the color number and name for each of the colors that I've used. So you can find all that information there for the what Lion Brand Vanna's Choice Yarn that I used. So here you can see the blanket. It's actually a nice large blanket. I like my baby blankets to be about 36 by 45 because I find that blankets that size. My six-year-olds will still sometimes use those as an extra blanket on their bed or as a reading blanket when they're sitting on the couch reading to each other. So it's nice to know that it's going to have a nice long life. It's small enough for a crib, but it's big enough to continue with them throughout a little bit of time. So let's now look at this blanket. I've told you to begin with you need to start off with a chain of 12 plus 4. And I let you know that for my blanket that I was just showing you, I actually chained with a, I actually chained 112 because that's um, 12 times 9 plus 4. In this case, we have 28. That's 12 times 2, which is 24, plus 4, which makes 28. Now we're going to half double crochet into the third chain from the hook and each chain across. And I just want to show you how I like to use my chains when I'm doing this. So we're going to just pull this out real quick to make life a little easier for me showing you things. You can see these little loops that are on the bottom of our chain. Here's the front of our chain, which has these pretty little teardrop kind of teardrop shaped loops at the top of the chain. And if you turn it over, there's a ridge on the back of the chain. I like to work into those ridges on my first row because what that does is it put, puts these nice loops right at the bottom of my blanket, which either gives it a nice finished edge if I'm not making a border, or if I am making a border, it gives me something nice and stable to work into. That's just how I prefer to do it. You do what makes you comfortable, but I want to let you know how I, how I did mine and how I prefer to do them. So we're going into the third chain. So here's the first ridge of the first chain. Here's the ridge of the second chain, and here is the ridge of the third chain. So that's where we're going to be working. So again, first, second, third. First, second, third. That is where we are working. And these little chains at the edge here, that's going to count as a stitch. And then here's our first half double crochet and we're going to continue making our half double crochets all the way across this row. You'll find when you're done, counting this little stitch at the edge, you'll end up with a multiple of 12 plus 2, uh, which is what you want for this. So our multiple of 12 was 24, so we should end up with 26 when we're done with this row. So I will get back to you at the end of this row. Okay, I finished this row and I realized that I actually mis misspoke on something there. Our final stitch count there will be, with the half double crochets, it will be a multiple of 12 plus 2, and then counting the turn chain here makes it 12 plus 3. So if we counted this as well, we would have um, 27 stitches here because our multiple of 12 was 24. So there's the 26 half double crochets plus the little, the chains at the end makes 27 stitches, all right? And there will be 27 stitches throughout this entire um, piece. Now, this turn, this ending of this row, 
things are a little weird on this pattern with the front and the back. We're basically out of three rows. There's two that are worked in front and one that's worked from the back. Two that are worked from the front and one that's worked from the back. Which means if you don't start and end as I show you, your blanket will start to veer off in one direction. And um, you probably don't want that. <laughs> so go ahead and make sure you're ending off and starting off your rows as I show you. Once you complete your last half double crochet, you want to do a chain because we're going to need this loop right here. Now you can pull this through and you can use this end to weave in. You can weave in this end later. Uh, but we need this loop right here to be able to work into. So you need to make sure when you complete your last half double crochet, you make that chain and then pull through. You don't just pull through the half double crochet. All right. Now we're going to start with row two. Give me a moment to scroll on my pattern to be sure that I'm telling you things correctly this time around. Now for row two, we're going to start with color B and we're going to make a standing single crochet, which is actually very simple. You start off by putting a slip knot on your hook. All right, and now what a standing single crochet means is you're just going to make a single crochet. Now, you see this stitch. Okay, and you see here's the half, a half double crochet right here. And then here is the loop that's coming out of the half <clears throat> of the half double crochet. Here is the chain to the chain at the edge of this blanket, and here is basically the top loop of that chain. That is where you're going to work into that top loop. It seems as though I'm losing my voice. And we're going to make our single crochet right into that. And now our pattern tells us to single crochet in each of the next two. One, two, which gives us three single crochets. You see them? One, two, three. Now we're going to make, now we're going to make our puff stitch, a front post puff stitch in the next stitch. All right. It's not as difficult as it sounds. A front post puff stitch is just combining a puff stitch and a front post stitch. So we're just going to take you through that one step at a time. Here is our next stitch if we were working into the loop, but we're not working into the loop, we're working into the stitch. So you see where this stitch just came out of? Right here, okay? If you kind of look down, this is our next stitch. The puff, puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, you're going to insert your hook from front to back and then from back to front, pulling that stitch to the front to make a front post puff stitch. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through. Now we've done that once. We're going to do that a total of four times. That was one. Yarn over, insert the hook in the same way. Yarn over, pull through. That's two. Yarn over, insert the hook. Yarn over, pull through. That's three. Yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through. That's four. Now we're just going to yarn over. There's actually nine loops on this hook if you were to count them all. We're going to yarn over and pull through everything. And that's our puff stitch. Now we are going to single crochet in each of the next 11 stitches. So here's the last stitch that we single crocheted into right there. You see how there's a stitch coming out of that? This loop right here designates the stitch that we actually just made our puff stitch into. So we're not going to work into that one. We're going to go into this loop. All right, so here is a loop that we worked a single crochet into. Here is a loop that we're leaving alone because we actually worked around the post of that stitch. Here is the loop that we're actually working into now and we're going to make 11 stitches. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, now that we've done that, we're going to front post puff stitch 
around the next stitch. So again, we yarn over, we go from front to back and then back to front into the next stitch. So again, here we see the last stitch we worked. If you kind of look down from there, you can see that this is the next stitch that we need. You can kind of see the separation of the stitches. Here's where I just worked, so here is the stitch right there that I need to work into. Yarn over, insert the hook front to back, back to front again to pull that stitch to the front. Yarn over, pull through, that's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through all of those loops. You do need to pull them up a little bit as you're working. You want to make sure that it's not too tight. I kind of did that one a little bit tighter than I should have. And now again, look back here. You can see that we pulled stitch, we crocheted into this loop already. This loop right here is coming out of the stitch that we just did our front post puff stitch on. So this loop is the loop we put our next single crochet into. Right, we, and you keep doing that. Single crochet 11, puff stitch. Single crochet 11, front post puff stitch. I'm going to keep going and then this row is going to end with a single crochet of 11. Yes. This one is going to add, double check that, a single crochet of 11. So there was I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and now here's where, remember I told you to make sure you did that that chain at the end after your last half double crochet? That's because that's the bit that we need to work into for number eleven. If you're not working into that chain that you put at the end of your last half double crochet, then somewhere along the way you counted wrong and you need to figure it out. <laughs> Alright, you need to go back and figure out where you made your mistake. Now, for row three, it's really simple. We chain one and we turn, or you turn and chain one as long as you're consistent. And now you're going to single crochet in each cr single crochet across. This little loop right here is your chain, so you ignore that. You're going into the single crochet. You're going to single crochet into each single crochet across. Okay, you're not actually just going into the single crochet across, you're actually going into each stitch across. So when you get to where your puff stitch is, you just keep on going. Each one of these loops you see at the top of your work, you are single crocheting into it. It doesn't matter if it comes from a puff stitch or if it comes from a single crochet, you're top stitching into it, okay? So it makes this row very, very simple. Here we've come to our last puff stitch and we're just going to keep on putting single crochets into every stitch that we come across. Okay, all the way to the end. Here's the loop that was on our um, hook to begin with, attached to that slip knot. We are single crocheting into that. And you can go back and you can count. Remember, um, you want to write down that number, whatever your multiple of 12 is. If you're using my pattern, then your number is 111. But whatever your multiple of 12 plus 3 is, you want to write that down so that if you're ever unsure of something, you can go back and you can count and make sure you have that number. If we counted, our multiple of 12 was 24 plus 3 makes 27. So there would be 27 single crochets that we just did in this row. Now we're done with this row. We're going to move back to the brown. For this row, you do not have to make that chain at the end. You can if you want to, but you're not going to work into that chain at the end. So if you want to, you can just clip your yarn and pull through just like that and weave in your ends from here. You can make the chain if that makes you happy and then pull through, but you won't be working into it. This is a stitch you'll be working into for this particular row. So now we're going to turn around so that we have our front side facing again. And now we're basically kind of repeating rows one, two, and three over and over again. Only row two 
is going to change where the puff stitch goes for the next couple times. So let's look at that again. For row one, two, three, we're on row four. We're going to make a standing half double crochet, which you start the same as a standing single crochet. You put a, a slip knot on your hook. And now you just make a half double crochet into this stitch. Remember I said you don't need to make that ending chain? That's because this is the stitch you're going to work into. All right, this stitch right here. So you can see your single crochet. You want the stitch that's kind of pointing coming from the left of it. So half double crochet has a yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through everything on your hook. Okay? And now you're just going to keep doing that all the way across. And again, that magic number that you had on our blanket, it's 111 if you're making it the same size as mine. For this little piece that we're doing right now, the magic number is 27. If we were counting, we would find that we will have 27 half double crochets because we are just going to half double crochet all the way across. Okay, we're getting to the end of our row. If we were counting here, I would be, in this case, I would be at 25 and I'd know that I need two more stitches. But this little kind of flippy bit right here, that's actually from your chain. You don't work into that. So you can see, you, you get your eyes trained to know that these are your last two stitches because that flippy bit is your chain. So here's my last two stitches. There we go. And if I were counting, there'd be 27. And now I'm just going to clip my yarn. And I'm going to remember to do that last chain after my last half double crochet and then pull through to be sure that I have that loop that I need to work into. And now we're going to start the next row with the next color. So again, it starts with a standing single crochet. You get that loop on your hook. And now, you are not working into this loop made from um, the slip knot. I knew I was losing a word there. Made from the slip knot on your half double crochet, your standing half double crochet. You're not working into that. You're working into the first stitch that's coming out towards the left of your first half double crochet. So you're going to ignore this. And when you weave in your ends, it'll get taken care of. And when you put on the border, everything will look peachy keen. You're going to ignore that and you're going to make a standing single crochet next to that. All right, now you are going to make, this is row five, you're going to make six more single crochets. So that, we made our standing single crochet and then we're going to make six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that means counting our standing single crochet, we should have seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we do. Now we're going to make a front post, front post puff stitch into the next stitch. So again, you can see, here's where my stitch is coming up. Right here, this is the last stitch I made. So this is the one next to it. That is the stitch that I'm making my front post, my, my front post puff stitch. So we yarn over, wrap from front to back and back to front again around that post, pulling the post to the front, yarn over, pull through. One, two, three, four. Yarn over, pull through everything on your hook. And now again, let's get that out of the way. This is the last loop that we worked into. We worked into that loop. This single crochet is coming out of it right there. So this loop right here is one that we are skipping 
because that's the stitch that we put our front post puff stitch around. So this is the loop that our next single crochet goes into. And we're going to make 11 single crochet and then make another front post puff stitch. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. We can double check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And now another front post puff stitch. And we're going to keep doing that 11 single crochets, 11 front post puff stitches until we get to the point where there's not enough room to put 11 more single crochets in. All right, where we're at right now. So now we are going to put in seven, yes, seven single crochets again. We use this one as a single crochet. This is where our puff stitch is, so this is where our next single crochet is going. One, two, three, four, five, six, and number seven needs to be in that chain that you put at the end of your last half double crochet. If it is not, then you have miscounted somewhere along the line. And just like we did in the green, we're now going to chain one, we're going to turn, and we're going to single crochet all the way back, which should be the same number as whatever our magic number is. In the case of this sample, it's 27. In the case of the Joseph blanket, it's 111. It's whatever your number is, though, is the one that you want to be counting. And we're just going all the way across. Okay, so we're going all the way across, and let me put my hand under here since this is the same color as my background practically. You can see I still have that one more stitch left to go because on this row of the single crochets, I do work into that, um, the, the loop started with the slip knot. Okay, and now I don't bother making that extra chain on here. I just clip my yarn and pull it through and turn my work over. I know these starts and stops seem a little bit maybe different than what you're used to and they they don't all start and stop the same way um you know all the browns start and stop the same way and all the other colors start and stop the same way but the reason why the browns are different from the other colors is because we're going front front back working from the front working from the front working from the back working from the front working from the front working from the back if we don't make these adjustments on where we start and stop the rows like I said before your blanket will start to veer and you don't want that so as much as this seems like maybe I'm doing something that isn't quite right trust me if you try to fix it your blanket will veer and right, it took me a redoing the first rows a couple times before I finally figured out what I was doing wrong <laughs> Sometimes I can be a bit stubborn. So here we are. Our next brown row is going to be the same as our previous brown row where we put a, go ahead and put on our slip knot and we make our standing half double crochet right into that last single crochet that we made. And then we make another half double crochet. We make a half double crochet into each stitch all the way across. Okay, again, we've gotten to the point where there's just the two stitches left. You see this little flippy bit? That's our, our chain. So we're going to put just the last couple stitches in here. And then I'm going to make that, I'm gonna clip my yarn and make that last chain to end off that last half double crochet. And now we have one more row before we start um, well, we have one more color row, then a brown row again, and then we go with all our repeats. So let's see, it's the blue that I have not used yet. Come on, untangle. There we go. All right. So again, just we're doing the blue, starting off just like we did with the white, where we make our slip knot, and we do a standing single crochet and we do not work it into the slip knot that comes just before this half double crochet. We work it into the stitch that's coming out of the half double crochet. That's where we make our standing single. Okay, and we're at row seven, so now I believe we're gonna do 11. Let's see, come on, scroll uh, with color A. 
sorry, we're at row eight. Um, so now 10 more. So yes, that ends up with a total of 11. Sorry about that. So 10 more stitches. That was the first one. And now we're doing 10 more single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So counting the starting single crochet, you would have 11. And now we're going to make a front post puff stitch around the next stitch, same as we've been doing them before. Okay, by now you should have this down. And again, now we're going to make 11 single crochets. And you can see how I'm going to have one loop right there that I have not worked into. I worked into this one was the last single crochet. That's unworked. This is the next single crochet. That's unworked because I put the puff stitch around that one underneath it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And now another puff stitch, front post puff stitch. One, two, three, and four. Yarn over, pull through everything. And now there should be just enough room to put in three single crochets at the end of this row. Again, the last one goes into that chain at the end of that half double crochet. If it doesn't go in there, you've done something wrong. So now what I'm going to do, and I don't think I need to continue to show you this until we get to the, um, the border bit, is I'm going to do my chain one. I'm going to work all the way back the other direction so that I still have whatever my row count is for the sample, it's 27, for the pattern on the blog, it's 111. And then I'm going to do one more row of the brown, just like I've done before, and then I'll get back to you and we'll work on the border. Okay, so here you can see we finished our little um, practice piece for the Joseph blanket. And I just wanna show you how to make the border, how to get the border going. So we start off with a standing single crochet in the corner. So here I've put my slip knot onto my crochet hook and we start off with the bottom right corner. We're just going to make, just basically find something that is akin to a corner. Make a standing single crochet, chain one, and make a single crochet. Now we're going to work across the side of our piece and we're going to do that by putting one single crochet into each stitch across. So on these browns, there's only one stitch. So we put one single crochet. On the colors, the blue, the white, and the green, there's actually two. So we'll put one into this single crochet and one into this single crochet. And then there's only one brown. There's two whites. So we put one into here and one into here. There's one brown just one. There's two greens. It lays flat this way. If you try to put more than one stitch into the brown, which I know it's a half double crochet, your inclination is maybe to put more than one there, but don't do it by putting just one stitch into each into the side of each of these stitches. It really does lie flat. Okay, there's one brown. You gotta kinda hang. When I wove in my ends, I think I maybe caught that one a little funny. All right, and then you're going to, again, grab what appears to be the corner, put a single crochet, a chain, a single crochet. And then you're just going to put a single crochet into each stitch across, okay? So a single crochet, again, into that same corner spot, okay? Because that was actually one of our... Um, one of our stitches and this is actually the chain that I did at the beginning. You can see I might have worked my chain at the beginning. I might have worked it a little tight because I'm having a hard time getting into some of these stitches. You want to try not to make your life too difficult by making your starting chain too tight. Let's get across to the end of that okay, We've row. got almost to the end of this. This is actually the bottom, almost across the bottom. Actually, you know, I guess this is the top. Of I started, oh, look at that. I actually started at the bottom I actually started at the top left, not at the bottom right, which is, as you can see, it's not a big deal. This was actually the bottom left of my blanket. I laid this down upside down. It's not a big deal which one you start at, honestly. I just had put the bottom left, which should have been 
here. I wrote that down in the pattern so that I could have a way to denote the um, the differences between the, the two sides and the top and the bottom. As you can see, it's not really a big deal as long as you have the technique right. <laughs> so I was just single crocheting across what is actually the bottom of this blanket. And then we get to the corner here and I'm going to place I've gone all the way across and then into that corner again I'm going to place a single crochet, a chain, and a single crochet. And then I'm going to place one single crochet into whoopsie, that stitch, into that brown stitch, and then one single crochet into each of these green stitches, one single crochet into the brown, one single crochet into each of these two white stitches, Sometimes things get a little wonky if you've, um, you know, I did my weaving in my ends really quickly on this one, and that sometimes makes it a little difficult, but if you take a little more time weaving in your ends, it'll be a little neater for you. One single crochet into the brown, one single crochet into each of these two blues, one single crochet into this brown, and then we hit our corner. I think this is actually a good space to use for our corner single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and then we're going to single crochet all the way across the top. All right, so let me do that. Okay, I've single crocheted all the way across back to where I started from, and I'm going to slip stitch into the top of my first single crochet. And now I'm just going to slip stitch into the chain one space right there. That was my corner. So I slip stitch into it. And then chain one, which does not count as a stitch, and then I'm going to single crochet, chain one, single crochet into this corner. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet into this corner. And then I'm just going to place one single crochet into every single single crochet until I get to the corner. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. One single crochet into every single single crochet until I get to the next corner single crochet, chain one, single crochet, so on all the way around until I get back to here again and then I'll slip stitch to the top of my first single crochet. And you can keep repeating round two of the border as long as you like. You can make this a little bit smaller and it might be neat, it might look pretty if you actually did two rows of the brown and then one of the green and then two of the brown and then one of the white and then two of the blue. I mean, the one of the white, then two of the brown, the one of the blue, and then two of the brown. Something like that. If you want a bigger border and less of the inside, what, however you want to do it, I just gave you instructions for two rounds because every round after round two can be worked in the same way. You can put some sort of frilly edge on it. You know, if you did this and if you were making it for a girl and wanted to put something more girly, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to do, that's fine. You can obviously change the colors, do change the numbers, do whatever you want. Once you get the hang of it, I love patterns like this that are really easy to adjust to your personality. So there you have it. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, Joseph's Puff Stitch Blanket, and uh, have a nice day. And if you actually stuck around this long, I thought I would show you what I have made with the little... Um, tester piece that we did. Uh, Joseph, the little baby who is getting the blanket, actually has a sister who is six years old who is in daisies with my girls. And so I decided with the little tester piece I made to show you guys how to make this pattern, I would make her a little hairband. So I just did some decreasing single crochets along the edge and put a little piece of elastic. Sorry, the camera's not incredibly still, but I'm holding it because my tripod isn't quite tall enough. But I ran some elastic along the back. I just kind of sewed it onto the back. And then I did a decreasing single crochet on each end back and forth until I was down to just three stitches and did that on both ends, sewed that elastic on, and then single crocheted around the elastic from the top, and then came back and single crocheted around the elastic from the bottom going underneath the single crochets of the top to kind of cover up that elastic. And in doing so, I made this little headband 
for Joseph is Joseph's sister. So, you know, there's something to do with your little swatches as opposed to just toss them in the trash or whatever. Sometimes when they're small enough, I join them and make bracelets. But I thought it would be fun for Joseph's sister to get a little gift since I'm sure he's getting all the goodies right now.